<laughs> Again, yeah, shout out to know. the sisters. She, you know, she's got to stay on code. Oh wow! Look at look at look at, look at what uh, Kamala said. Let's get out of um, Afghanistan. And concerns are growing over new Taliban laws banning women's voices and bare faces in public in Afghanistan. <laughs> How is yeah, this not a better. biggest story? That's not new. How's that? That's that's not fucking new. No, but 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 when we were over there, when we got well over there, the women were going to school. Women were teachers. We this this just happened when we left. Remember when we left? And those people was hopping on the plane, trying to catch, trying to literally jump on the plane on the tarmac as it was leaving. You know, remember that? that a few years ago? Yeah, I remember, I remember that. that. This is this is this is this all happened when we were there since what 2000 about 9 2003 or something like that after after we went over there in 9 11 and um women were um women were um teachers and in, in fucking in public spaces and you know lawyers and shit women were just it was they had the similar rights as much as you can in a in a in an Arab country, in a in a um, Middle Eastern country, in a Muslim country, and as soon as we left, Taliban rolled all that shit back. Afghanistan, UN officials say the rules extend the quote already intolerable restrictions on the rights of women and girls. Those new rules come nearly three. You see, like how it wouldn't be news if, like, if this was the way it had always been, it wouldn't be news. You feel me? They wouldn't be talking about it. It would just be another day. Is in public in Afghanistan. UN officials say the rules extend the quote already intolerable restrictions on the rights of women and girls. Those new rules come nearly three years after the Taliban seized control of the country in 2021, following the withdrawal of U.S. troops there. Moments ago, former President Trump laid wreaths on the memorials of several service members killed in the Kabul airport bombing three years ago today. President Biden released a statement marking the anniversary, saying those 13 Americans embodied the best of who we are as a nation. And Vice President Harris urged the nation to come together to honor them. Country Director of Afghanistan Women for Women International, Paivan Sadali, joins me now for more on this. Paivan, thank you. All right, don't get cute, man, because you're talking to Americans. Get that thing over your head, man. <laughs> that goddamn fucking yeah, work on, respect. girl. I'm telling you, man, don't, don't, we can't save you, man. And why are you talking anyway? Taliban oh, about to knock on her door on live television. <laughs> right, right. Yo, that would be so hysterical because you the U.S. To a medical about, country? Yeah, they talk about women's rights all the time and how they're proponents of women's rights and yada yada. They don't give a fuck about no women's rights in food, America. Bro. Unless it's in America. They don't care nothing about women who are not in America. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm sure it's a tough day. Can you walk me through your first reaction? What went through your mind when you read that the Taliban was implementing these new laws? And what are you hearing from women in Afghanistan who now cannot show their vases or utter their voices in public? Thank you, Diane, and uh, thank you for keeping Afghan women uh, visible to, to the world. You know, we got this news three or four days ago. And of course, uh, as, as, it, as it always is, when we see an edict like this, there there is a, a frantic rush. And these bitches talk about, not this one, but the ones who in America talk about how bad Trump is. <laughs> Can you believe that? Trump is this and Trump is that. He's a Texas misogynist, da 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 News today, extra, extra read all about it. You bitches can't talk no more. The end, period. The longer this stuff goes, Just man, to find out, um, you know. the longer this stuff goes, um, the more I start agreeing with, like, Islam. <laughs> I've been on that side. I think feminism is the cause of all these problems in the Western world. Bingo, yo, I was just about to say that. Should they need to Except implement those man. laws over here? These even the racial problems, even the racial problems would not be nearly yeah. as much of a problem. They walking around oh, ass naked and man, listen, cover up. It's not oh, funny what? though. Our real talk, like, think about it, man. All the all the stories you cover, bro. How much of this stuff could really be solved if we had Sharia law? Like, I'm I'm serious. Yeah, only or just well, took the voting away. 
they definitely, yeah, they definitely wouldn't be able to vote. So the policies wouldn't be as woke and as liberal and as progressive, communists and all that stuff. Yeah, and yeah, definitely. If 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 they, if, if if we took their, I think I I wouldn't be, I wouldn't have a problem with taking their right to vote away, um, with some safeguards so that they don't get you know totally abused because you do need safeguards to like make sure like okay like. Uh, you can't vote in the federal elections, maybe, and you can't vote. Well, no, you can't let them vote for mayor either because they're the two that that's where that's what affects your life. But something to where men couldn't like complete because I, I mean, we don't want our mothers and daughters to live under this type of shit, but you know, something in the law where it couldn't get to this point, you know what I'm saying? But they just couldn't vote. what it really means what are the provisions how do we translate uh and for our organization how do we immediately you know communicate with our staff especially our female staff to protect their mental health and well-being first and second to ensure they're able to continue coming to the office uh or to the sites where they need to who thinks that they give a fuck about mental health over there because we hear so much about mental health here the, these women's mental health, yo, you, you, they just told you the other day, hey, um, no more talking in public. Hey, uh, yeah, hold, hold on, but no, that's it. Like, there's no, like, there was no build up. There was no, we're gonna, the Congress and the Senate are hemming and hawing over this. Blah, blah. No, it was one day, life was one way. The next day, no more talking in public. The end. Not a, and, we don't want to hear no protest. You know how they, you know how they protest of Israel and uh, Black Lives Matter. None of that. There will be none of that. It's over. They said what they said, and it's over. Nothing. There's no rebuttal. There's no response. Just stop talking or else. And the crazy thing is that because um, we've been out of uh, we've been out of Afghanistan for a little minute. That didn't happen overnight, right? Like they was probably they rolled over there. a lot of stuff back immediately. They, immediately they rolled a lot of stuff. Like, well, yeah, but what I'm saying to get to this point though, my question yeah, is point, like, yeah, yeah. they was probably already talking shit and didn't realize, you know, Daddy Joe couldn't save them no more. Yeah, well, I mean, they did what women do. They probably, you know, just were like, you know, being women. You know what I'm saying? Like, and those men over there, they had it like this before. And then when we came, we disrupted that. So the men over there were used to this the way it is now. And then hey, they hey. had to go 20 years without it. MAGA, make Afghanistan great again. I'm telling you, man, facts. This shit is crazy. Because you notice, look, she know she can't go out on the street with a bunch of women and sides and protests and yell at cops. Nah. She knows that is there'll be none of that. There won't even be like a protest. They won't have to put down a protest. They want to go to some protests and shoot a bunch of people. There will be no protest. To do their work serving other women. Now, these laws over the, they empower the vice and virtue ministry to be at the front line of regulating personal conduct. and. That allows them to administer punishments like warnings or arrest if they believe that Afghans have broken any of these laws. So, yeah, if you talk bitch in public, you get arrested. Yeah. And look at this white woman. This this white woman would have fucking cried if about fucking Sonia Massey or Breonna Taylor and thought that the worst thing that ever happened. But this is a whole country worth of, full of women. And she's just, she's holding it together. That's why I blast, that's why I blast them with all that fake emotion for these little things. Look how she's holding it together. She's not emotional about this. This isn't touching her heart that all these women going through this stuff over there. She doesn't give a fuck. She, she's what does just that mean happy for women? It's not her. She's yeah. ecstatic, it's not her. Exactly warnings or arrest if they believe that Afghans have broken any of these laws. So what does that mean for women in the country? And what do you think life is like for women in Afghanistan right now? 
Well, let, let's clarify. I mean, I, I am here in, in Afghanistan. Uh, the Ministry of the Prevention of Vice and Promotion of Virtue has one overarching mandate, and that is to connect the Afghan people closer to the ideology of the de facto authorities, the Taliban. And where we saw in the early years uh, guidance coming out, almost, almost a hearts and minds campaign, what we're now seeing is for the first time with this new regulation law. Uh, however, there we still do need to wait and see regarding the enforcement of this law. PVPV is a ministry. The police and other directorates are a separate ministry. They do work together. The PVPV and the police are uh, oftentimes housed with each other. But what we are look at how diplomatic she is. She's not raging against this. Needs to end now. Damn it! And so and so <laughs> this is, is a sexist, homogenous, blah, 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 and they need us out there. And I'm talking. <laughs> she's the. Yo, she not none of that shit that American women do. She is calm, measured. She's looking like, well, we'll just have to wait and see if they start clocking bitches upside the head if they speak in public. We don't know that she's, yet. She's in fear. Yes. This is how they talk when they, you know what I'm saying, when they know, like, she's not, she's not running her mouth. She's not doing an AOC or a Cory Bush. She's just very, very, she's, she's, she knows if she say the wrong thing, like you said, there'll be a knock on her door in the middle of this thing and some dude in all black will come up and say, cut the cameras. And this woman right here, an American woman, she'll just go to the next story. And then other news. Almost, almost a hearts and minds campaign. What we're now seeing is, for the first time, with this new regulation law. Uh, however, there we still do need to wait and see regarding the enforcement of this law. PVPV is a ministry. The police and other directorates are a separate ministry. They do work together. The PVPV and the police are uh, oftentimes housed with each other. But what we are seeing very much in Afghanistan today amongst women and amongst uh, de facto authorities at various levels are, are questions around the level of connection to the ideology that is being extensively promoted through the PVPV. So that, that's their main job, to really promote and check on ideolo ideology. Uh, the actual ability to enforce is something that we, we need to wait and, and see. However... No, she is straight up like... <laughs> it's just amazing. Of course. Kidding me? Like, well, we just... Well, I mean, I, I can't talk in public now, but, you know, there is a silver lining. I mean... Um, Sometimes Bro, you would think we were talk talking about <laughs> potholes. You would think we were talking about, you know, uh, she, uh, yeah. a, a street lamp or something, man. Th this yeah. is the most, like, calm news conversation about a, a, a big issue I've ever seen. Because she, she knows the, the men are not, like, they're not joking about if, if the women in America knew the men here felt the same way, then it would be the same thing. They They know that Women appeal to men for their rights at the end of the day. They understand that. Yeah, and look, these are the men. Like, these men are not, they're not playing. Like, like they don't have to, like, it's not going to be like some protests in town square where a bunch of women just start screaming, ah, ah, we're protesting this thing by screaming and talking. No, there'll be like one woman who like, sneezes and she gets brought up to trial and she has to defend herself and say, I was just sneezing. And like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> she had to prove that it was a sneeze. And that'll be like the huge story over there. It was did she sneeze or did she say something? And then it'd be like a big scandal over there. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. <laughs> that's, that'll be what it's like. They won't, they, they know. They know. Look, you can tell by the tone in her voice. Look, look at the look in her eyes. She looks humbled and meek. There's no fierceness, no 
no anger in her eyes, no rage by being told, hey, um, by on Sunday being able to, you know, talk and then Monday being like, hey, I, hey, um, oh yeah, um, everybody, women can't talk to them in public. All right, that's it. Um, yeah. And no, um, can I just ask one question? No, no one question, none of that shit. It's no women can't talk no more. That's it. Cause they know them boys over there are For serious. The <laughs> Health impact is still profound. I'll tell you a story from, from yesterday, even though as an organization we had gone through what the regulations mean, what they don't, how we will or will not police our own staff. Uh, still, you know, out of their own accord, a number of female staff yesterday chose to pull their brothers or fathers out of work, uh, have them come as mahrams, accompanying them to the office, which is very humiliating. Uh, they chose. So they had to get them brothers and husbands to company them to work because you can't they can't leave you can't go anywhere without a man <laughs> they got a to special their- thing for that they rolling shit back so this is you know what the, you know what this is doing right this is gonna make it to where women can't go to work anymore like so now like who, how many times is your brother and your fucking husband gonna take off work the company to work they have to work themselves so at, at some point, the, the rubber's going to meet the road, and that's going to be like a week. Look, baby, I took the whole week off to come to work. Now I got to look. I got to go to work, so you guys stay in the house. That's, 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 the only, that's the only thing that can happen. Unless you got like a father who's retired and he's going to come to you to work every day just so you have a job. Even though as an organization we had gone through what the regulations mean, what they don't, how we will or will not police our own staff. Uh, still, you know, out of their own accord, a number of female staff yesterday chose to pull their brothers or fathers out of work, uh, have them come as mahrams, accompanying them to the office, which is very humiliating. Uh, they chose to have their faces covered. Uh, and when they came to the office, you know, on one hand, you know, one started just crying from that experience. Uh, another one, you know, heard from from friends that actually, you know, women can still come to the office. They're not being barred. And she started crying out of relief. So, you know, women are 50% of the... <laughs> yeah, you can still come to the office if you got a male relative with you. Yo, these, they not playing. They roll Yo. everything back. And, and, and here's one thing is like, there's nothing we can do about it. Okay. We left so much gear. I'm talking about weapons. I'm talking about vehicles, yeah. even aircraft. There's nothing anybody can do about this shit. We made them so fucking strong. Yeah. Just leaving. And that was Kamala. Remember Kamala said I was the last person in the room when Biden made that decision. Remember she said that? Yeah. She said she was cool with it, man. I, I'm cool with it too. Yeah, Kamala's Kamala's always all the way cool with this leaving leaving there. Um and listen, Trump would have left eventually, but he wouldn't have left him like this. And he would have left he wouldn't have gave him all that shit. You know Trump wouldn't have gave him all the weapons and vehicles and shit. Trump's um, plan was to take the shit to Pakistan and either sell it to them over there or just leave yeah. it in fucking Pakistan. Yeah. This is this right here. This this right here, this woman is she's not she's not even giving her opinion about the women. When they asked her about women, she gave those two stories. She didn't give her opinion. She didn't give no editorial, no op ed about what she thought about that those women went through. She just told the story and she was looks pretty scared doing that will or will not police our own staff. Uh, Still, you know, out of their own accord, a number of female staff yesterday chose to pull their brothers or fathers out of work, uh, have them come as mahrams, accompanying them to the office, which is very humiliating. Uh, They chose to have their faces covered. Uh, And when they came to the office, you know, on one hand, you know, one started just 
crying from that experience. Uh, another one. Now, you know, can you get arrested for crying? Because that's audible. We can hear that shit, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, like for real, we can hear like that shit. Start crying. <laughs> I would bet. I would bet. Yes. You know what I'm saying? We can hear that. Um, salute to J J Jack Crispy, man. Uh, or what? Salute to you, man. Um, but we can we can hear we can hear that. So just I don't know. That's listen. That might we might have to take that to court in Afghan the Afghan Supreme Court so we get a ruling on that. So we got some clarification on that one. It's crying, speaking because. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm on the fence. I need. I, I'm gonna need the Afghan Supreme Court to tell me what that is. I heard from from friends that actually, you know, women can still come to the office. They're not being barred, and she started crying out of relief. So, you know, women are. 50% of the population, uh, they're, they're trying with all their might to continue to be professionals, to continue to be medical workers, uh, continue to go to school however they can. Very, very much uh, an uphill battle that takes an enormous toll on, on well-being. I bet it does. Do you expect to see more laws like this put in place? I, I think we're watching a uh, struggle move forward. You know, the very fact that this has been made law is an attempt to, to codify uh, what was previously guidance. However, what we're also seeing is that the ban on parks or gyms are not, are not in this law. That the former guidance that mentioned the chaduri, the burqa, is the best way to cover, is not in this law. Now it's saying don't wear transparent clothing. That There's more nuance in there. So some will say, she nuance said, what she tried to find a similar There's, it's funny there ain't no nuance <laughs> yo think about it they can't find no silver line in trump um uh the abortion he said states you can get abortion but we're gonna leave it up to the state to determine they like we they taking us back to the handmaid's tale oh he's the worst person over here it's just like you you can't talk and you got to cover up and if you want to go to work, you got to find a man to accompany a family member to accompany you. And they're like, well, if you look at all sides rationally and reasonably, it's equitable. Um, we have to make sure that we determine. And it's like, wow. Cope. Wow. When they when they don't have no choice, they know how to eat some. This is a turd. This is a this isn't even a turd. This is a Diarrhea smoothie they eating over there, man. <laughs> you know, what I'm <laughs> like, yo, this is they, and they and they sipping it and they sipping it with a smile. But over here, you know, what I'm saying you give them they want a, they want ice shake. spice and they want to shake their yeah. ass over here. You give maybe them if they allow public they say, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just saying, like over here, if you give them a steak, they say, "Man, this is." I asked for I asked for medium rare, and they send it back to the fucking kitchen. <laughs> over there, they sipping diarrhea shit smoothies with a smile on their face. Chaduri, the burqa is the best way to cover. Is not in this law. Now it's saying don't wear transparent clothing. That there's more nuance in there. So some will say, actually, with this law, there is a a. A defining, a codifying, but also a codifying of what women can do. Of course, uh, you know, this law also has regulations on men. Beards are mentioned again. Men need to wear beards. Everybody needs to pray. Uh, when men have to wear beards. Now, that's crazy. Like, the, the oppression, man. How oppressive, man. Those men got it so bad over there, man. We need to fucking fight for those men's rights, man. <laughs> For real. You gotta remember, this isn't just a, any old government here. This is a religion. This is a way of life. Like, uh, it, yeah, it's the religion is the government, though. That that's not true. That the religion and the government are intertwined. That's my point. Is they're the yeah. same thing. If anything, it, yeah, it's the same way government. Their, their government is God, and the Sharia yeah. law is. Yeah, man. I should. It'd be fun. I should. I should say, man. We starting. To, we we starting to protest downtown. 
for what's going on in Afghanistan, man. And then when um, a bunch of the wokes just show up and shit, we be like, yeah, man, men should be able to have the right to shave. This is a travesty, man. <laughs> Man, that shit crazy, man. This is not, nah, but this is this ain't right, man. That, that what they doing to those men over there, man. It's just it's just a damn shame, man. When you see PVPV in action, you know, last week they were in my building. I saw them taking the stereo away from from our neighbors who were playing music. Uh, these. Were <laughs> <laughs> wow, Damn, she slipped that one in there. Right, and with a smile on her face, though, like she literally had to smile because she knows she said that shit with an attitude. <laughs> we are not going to do it. She got to see that shit with a smile on her face. Yo, we getting the, we getting a fucking raw deal over here with these women over here, man. Listen, and I got a daughter. My daughter' first day of school was was, was today. Was well, just today in my. Why I I I would I I'm glad they got the rights they got. Don't get me wrong, but we're getting a shit deal over here. With you know what I'm saying? Like this just shows how shitty our deal is with our woman. We're getting screwed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I agree. <laughs> They taking, they showing up and taking your fucking radio, no music, motherfucker, bitch, nothing. Bitch, you can't, you ain't two-step. Two-step to what? Wear beards, everybody needs to pray. Uh, when you see PVPV in action, you know, la last week they were in my building. I saw them taking the stereo away from, from our neighbors who were playing music. Uh, these laws are affecting everyone. And the PVPV is very much, you know, a point of contention amongst the Afghan people. All right. Well, we wish you the best. Payvan Seydali. Did she just say we wish you the best? <laughs> oh, shit. This is a good look, niggas. <laughs> Meanwhile, no we're going to... bullshit. She said we wish you the best. God. No. Not Catherine. With a straight face. She's not joking. <laughs> Good luck. Cold hearted as shit. She said, all right, all right, all right. We wish you the best. Amongst the Afghan people. All right. Well, we wish you the best. Payvan Seydali, country director of Afghanistan Women for Women International. Glad to see your face and hear your voice today. Thank you for that. <laughs> Next time they gonna have a rule where she gotta do this shit with a burk on. That's crazy, man. We wish you the best. Like, yo, like, not like, yo, we gonna start protesting. We gonna, nah. We're gonna engage our, our media. We're gonna engage <laughs> our politicians. Nah, she said, all right, man, I'll let y'all. <laughs> no, we're gonna fight you. None of that. <laughs> wow. Wow. Next, you're going to hear Kamala want to go to, go to war. <laughs> Yikes. We wish you <laughs> the best. May the fourth. Like, <laughs> she might as well have said, all right, you guys are fucked. <laughs> all right, man. Whoo. Shit, man. We getting a raw deal over here, man. We get. We get. Rude over here, man. Um, I'm telling you, man. Uh, I blame the glider wow. man. For too simp, too much simping. You blame? Uh, uh, it's all 